So I saw this tweet from Jamie asking about forms in Next.js and React. So I wanted to make a quick demo video where we'll go from this basic form to something a little more complex, talk about client and server validation and some of the other things that Jamie mentioned in their tweet. So let's start with this. On the left, I have a basic HTML form with one input for an address. And on the right, I'm gonna say, hey, for this address, let me just open up DevTools, we're gonna say, hello. And I'm gonna hit enter, submit this form, it's gonna clear out the value, make a get request back to itself, and update the URL with the value. So we have a query param of address, and then we have the value that I entered into the form. This is just a basic default way the browser works with handling forms, and we're gonna to wanna to extend this a little bit further. As a side note, on the form, when we decide what the action is, we could also say something like we wanna to navigate to a different route, and if I do new here, we're gonna to navigate to slash search, which I don't have, and still append that query param. But we don't wanna do that, so I'm just gonna navigate back to where we're at. Instead, we actually wanna kinda of call some kind of function, some kind of action where we can do some work. So it'd be great if I could just use JavaScript for this. So maybe I wanna have something like save action. That looks good. And then we need to define this function, save action, and inside of here, we are going to console log. We'll just do, uh, hey. So we have this function save action that we want to run on the client. Well, the default of the Next.js app router is that this page is gonna be a server component. So if I actually went ahead and saved this file, I would expect to see an error that says, hey, by the way, you probably wanted to have use server. You wanted to mark this entry point to the server to use this function where you're gonna do something like talk to a database. Well, to demonstrate something here, you can actually mark the entry point into your page as a client component. So if I go to the top and I mark this as use client, what we're telling Next.js is actually we're gonna mark the entry to our entire page as a client component that makes not only the form and the input, but also this action turn into a client action. So if I open up the console here and I say, just anything and submit the form, I see, hey. So I see our console log in the browser, in the client environment, but we probably wanna to talk to a database or something like that, so we don't wanna do this. Instead, we want to mark this as uh, use server. And that's gonna say, hey, we have this function that our form can basically spin up like an API endpoint without you having to do the wiring yourself. So when the form submits, it can go call this API or this server action. And this is gonna to need to be an async function. So if I save here, I reload the page again, and I just submit this. Now we see the console log on the server. So it's kind of cool how you can move that same programming model between the client and the server. Um, but let's actually make this a little bit more feature rich here and move over to a more advanced example, which is the address form. Okay, so I just imported this address form component that I made in V0. It's just using Shad CN UI components for the inputs and the labels and the cards. And we're gonna talk about how this works. It has some client and server validation and kind of step through the code. The first thing is when you're doing a lot of form logic with React 19, you're gonna be using things like use action state, these hooks that are designed for client components. It's not a bad thing, it's not a wrong thing if you have a server component entry into your application, like this page, where maybe you even mark this as an async component and you're fetching some data in here and forwarding it to your client components that are below. That's totally fine. So address form is a client component and inside of here we have just some normal HTML elements and some ShadCN uh, UI components for the form. And I wanna talk through kind of each individual bit on here. The first question that this tweet had was, how do I get the form to reset when I submit it? So let's actually just give this a shot here. Uh, I'm gonna try to save the address and it's gonna say, hey, this field is required, which is client or browser validation of the form. So I'll enter in something here. It actually had um, let's do some city. Please fill out this field, we'll do a state, zip code. Oh, it looks like it also is expecting multiple digits. We'll do five. Hit save. Oh, no, we need a country too. 
Now we can save and it saves this value to the database. So you'll notice all of the values in the form reset. This is the default behavior of using forms in React in Next.js. It's mimicking the same behavior that you get out of the browser. Most of the time you want this, but sometimes you don't. For example, if you have errors, ideally I don't wanna to have to fill out all of those things again. For example, let me go to our input element where we used some browser validation. Highly recommended to have this, by the way. You wanna have both client and server validation, but let's say I didn't. Let's say I took off the required field, the min length, the max length. Let's just get rid of those. I'll reload this page. I'll try to submit. So now it's not gonna give me the validation in the browser. So I'll do this one, I'll do this one. I hit save. So now we're actually gonna go to the server. We have our server validation. It comes back with errors and the errors are saying, hey, street address is required. There were some errors in the form, but we lost all of the values that we had currently. So I'm gonna show you what the fix is for this. And then we're gonna talk more about how it works. So use action state is the hook inside of my component that allows me to connect some state between my server action and the actual component that's rendering it. This is how you return those values and pass them back and forth. So I'm passing in some action, which is submit address, and I get back this action that I forward to my form action. So there's this state that we derive back that we use inside of our component. You notice we're using it here for the different errors, um, but we can also use that state to hold the temporary values that we've submitted. So if I go to our server actions file, what we wanna do is reuse the values that we submitted to our server action. We wanna send those back to the client. So for example, in this block where we're saying there were form errors, so the validation failed, really what we wanna do is send something like inputs, which are gonna be the raw data. So the data that we passed to the server action, we're gonna say, you know what? Send that back to the client. Let me save this. And then inside of our address form, what we wanna do is read the value from the state that we've derived from use action state. So we could do something like on the city, we could do default value is going to be state.inputs, and this is going to be city. So let me save, and as a reminder, the street address is still, does not have client validation, it does have server validation, so we're gonna intentionally leave it blank. And we're gonna say the city is going to be this, this, one, two, three, four, five. And now I'm gonna hit save. And what you're gonna notice is that the zip code, the state, the country, they all were reset. There was a server error for street address, but the city value, the city value persisted. It was able to take the value from the server action, put it into use action state, and then I can read the value. So what that means, and I'll just fast forward here, is that we wanna put this default value on all of the fields. So now that I've added them all, let's do a quick demo. Again, I'll leave street address blank. We'll say this is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, and then something else here. Hit save. Okay, well, I guess we need more. And I guess we need more here. Okay, so the street address, we didn't provide anything. We had the server side validation, but notice all of the other inputs retain their value from before. So now I can go in and actually give some address here and everything works. Now, you'll also notice there was a couple other goodies I didn't get a chance to talk to in here, but we've added the right autocomplete values. Um, if we wanna fill this with one password or last pass or the passwords app. Um, and we also have these nice errors coming from our state as well that show underneath the input. So just a quick little example of how you can do both server side and client side validation with forms in React and Next.js. I hope that answers the question here. Peace.